G'day guys, welcome back. I'm doing a six flip cup pour today and I'm doing them in some pastel colours to match my bedroom. Uh, my walls are grey, my bedding is pink and grey and then I've got some apricot and white and sort of grey cushions as well. So that's what I'm doing this for today. So I've already started because this takes a long time and I didn't want to show it all on, on film. So I've got in my pouring medium today, I've made up a big batch, three parts Floetrol, one part PVA glue, half a part of pouring medium. That's the Floetrol and the PVA glue. I can't get Elmer's here, so I use the PVA from Bunnings and in just a little bit of the um, global pouring medium as well. And for cells, I'm using silicone, treadmill silicone oil. And these are pretty full cups, these ones, um, big cups. I've put five drops of oil in each colour except the black and the white. So for colours, sunset pink. Peony pink, a darker pink, rose, black and white, and antique silver, and this darker sort of terracotta colour, um, I just added some um, burnt sienna, so it's a little bit darker. Alright, so I'm just layering my colours, I'm going to keep going with that, so I don't waste too much time here. This is a 40 centimetre by 120 centimetre canvas, just the right size for the area of wall I want to put it on above my TV. And I'd rather have too much paint than not enough, so using it all up. little bit of white I think. There's not much white left. So I'm hoping for some background. If you've been watching my little test videos in these colours, you'll know that I'm after some background, but some lovely cells as well. All right, uh, a little bit more. Uh, no, finish off the black and then I'll put a little bit more pink in. Pretty full cups these. Probably don't need all of this, but I didn't want to be short on such a big canvas. I'd rather tip it off if I don't need it than have to stretch my cells too much to get a good coverage. all of that because it seems a bit overpowering and then the last of the pale pink I think will be enough two litres of paint for this pour. Whoops, very full so it's a bit hard to flip them over. 
work out where I want them to go. About there. And lucky last. Okay. Lots of cells popping up already. There's the tiny little flow troll cells, which I don't particularly want, but I always get. That's okay. I can deal with them. They look really pretty against the black there. The multicolored cells popping up there. I'll just give that a minute for the paint to settle. Pretty cells here as well. Oops, there's a hair, something, I'll get rid of that little hair, okay, so I'm going to drag these down to cover the canvas, um, hopefully I'll have enough paint that I won't have to tilt too much, I don't really want to tilt side to side, so I'll move them over a bit, um, because I want to keep my um, linear patterns up and down so hopefully just tilt up and down. I will have to do a little bit on the sides to cover the sides but mainly just up and down. All right let's get started. Lots and lots of paint. Pulling down and back up again. There's a little bit of paint in the cup that's okay I'll leave it there. going to be a little bit different even though it's got the same paints in the same orders they're all going to be a little bit different beautiful cells popping up already darker I think than my previous one that I did. I have got the darker pink and the darker terracotta in here as well as the pale pink and the pale apricot. Uh, I think I used a little bit more black in this one. I got a lot of comments on the previous one and everyone said oh, I love the black so I did put a little bit more black in than I did with my four cup flip in similar colours. Now I'm just going to torch a little bit just to get some of the bigger cells to pop up and pop these air bubbles. Flamethrower today. So where I've, where I've got apricot on pink here, don't really get much in the way of cells. The lighter colours are always going to react with the darker colours. So the two pale ones there next to each other aren't going to really do all that much. Let's get a little bit closer to get some cells coming up. Keep it moving because I don't want the, little, don't want the caterpillars. pretty thick so it takes a while for the heat to get down there and to bring the silicone oil up to the surface. Okay, that's plenty. I'm getting way, way too many cells. Never mind. All right, let's get to tilting. Lift it up a little bit so I can get those little triangular white areas covered that way and then this way as well. This is pretty heavy, this canvas. Just need to get that off the end and then that side's done. How's this side looking? 
pretty much all covered. I can just finish the corners later on. Okay, now, tilt the other way. Do the same thing. Just move the paint to the center of the canvas and then I'll sort of pick it up on a bit of an angle. Make sure that's straight again. I put little marks on my puppy piddle pads here so I can see where the canvas should be from after I've picked it up so I know it's still in frame for you. Lots and lots of cells. That's okay, we like cells, don't we? Now that end's going a little bit faster than this end, so I'm going to tip on a bit of an angle to get these bigger blank areas covered. Let's move the paint that way a touch. Over the edge, Just getting on my fingers. That's what gloves are for, over the edge. Okay. Oh, that's looking really pretty. Okay, now I have to, I've got a lot of cells up here, so I just need to move it down that way a little bit more. And I might move it that way a touch just to get that corner. Let's see how we go. Don't want to interrupt too much of the cells. So I want to centre these again. See how this is, there's a lot of cells here and nothing down there. So I just want to bring that down just a touch. So just working on the composition now. I'm happy with how everything's looking. Just working on the composition. And I'll see. I don't really want to go too much over that corner, but I'll pick it up over here and just sort of see if I can tilt very gently. Mm, just a touch. Nope. So this is starting to curve here. I'll just have to fill that in. All right, I'm going to take it back the other way to straighten up those lines that I've just curved because I do like my linear patterns, my linear effects. So I don't want to change that terribly much. I have to try and get over into that corner because now I've changed that pattern there if possible. Not really. Where's my line? Okay, there we go, back again. Um, so, I will just fix my corners. There's my spatula gone. Um, it's never there when you need it. I think it's on the sink, actually. There it is, found it. These little spatulas, they're great for picking up paint and uh, putting onto the corners. Now, how's that looking? Beautiful, beautiful cells, some of these. My goodness. I think I could probably do with cutting down the silicone next time. I know I did have a, when I was doing my experiments with the coconut milk hair serum, I was cutting right back to one drop. Um, but I thought, this is um, silicone treadmill oil, so I'll just try with a few more uh, drops and see what happens. But um, it obviously is very, very strong. So I'll pop that there. And I'm just going to give it a bit of a smush. If that's a word. So it goes over the edge and when I torch that, hopefully it will fix some cells as it is and kind of look as if it's matching in. I didn't want to have that those lines there. Right, so quick torch just to pop some bubbles and then I will pick up some of this. You can see how that picks it up like that and you just put it on the side like that and let it run down on its own. Don't try and um, you know, stick your fingers in it and smooth it out. Just gently let the paint run down. You just put it on the side, let it run down on its own. So I'm just going to go around and fix up as 
not too many areas that need fixing up. I did a pretty good job of covering it, if I do say so. Just a couple of little bits on the corner that need fixing up. This corner needs a little bit of the terracotta, so I'll pick some of that up and put that there. You can sort of see what colours you want to match and you can pick up the appropriate colours and put them where you need to put them. That was an apricot corner, so I'm going to put apricot paint there. Oops, and move that out of the way. I've still got a little bit of paint in these cups. Now this one is kind of a pinky grey, so I'm just going to take some of that, line it up there and let the paint fall down. It'll create a nice little linear effect as it falls down. You don't need to scrape it on. Alright, so that's that done, that's that done. How about this side? A little bit needs doing on this side. Pick that up at the top. Let it drip down. Need a bit more pink over on that side, I think. And then I've got one little corner over there to do. Do that in a minute. I just want to check this composition again. Still a lot of paint on here, so I can move it pretty freely. So I'm going to stretch out my cells a little bit, get rid of some of that busyness down the bottom there. Just sort of balance it a little bit more. Okay. How's that? I think that looks better. There was a lot of those tiny little flow troll cells down there. And by doing that, it's stretched out these other ones here. I've got lots and lots of multicoloured cells, which are really pretty. Liking these colours. Pale pastels. I've still got a pop of the, um, the darker terracotta there. And the darker pink, along with the lighter terracotta and the lighter pink. These cells in here are just gorgeous. These black and silver with the apricot in them. Just beautiful. All right, now I was going to torch, wasn't I? Let's do it. Quick torch. PVA glue is notorious for little pinholes. So make sure that once you've finished tilting, you go over well with the torch to pop any air bubbles. Otherwise, you will get little pits from your PVA when it dries. So just be aware of that if you're using PVA in your mix. I really like the PVA for its binding qualities. I find it holds the cells really nicely. They keep their shape, their rounded shape, even though you're tilting. I do like that. Okay, enough of the torch. I think that's really, really pretty. Happy with that. I'll have to show you at some stage the painting that I did in these colours to match it. Uh, I did it about a year ago. It's a, it's a swipe in these colours. So it's hanging on the wall at the moment though, so I don't really think I can go and grab it and show it to you. But um, I will pop it up at some stage. It is on my Facebook page, the Australian Acrylic Pouring page. It is there. Um, it's an older post from last year. But it is there if you did want to check it out. Same colours but in a swipe that was. So it sh it'll match even though it's not the same technique. The colours are very similar. So it should match nicely in my bedroom. Let's finish off this last little corner here. There we go. And then the last thing you need to do with your painting is just run your spatula or a stir stick or something along the bottom to catch your drips because as it dries those drips will well the drips will dry and you'll end up with little hard drips on the end so 
just as it's drying, catch them and remove them so that you get a nice clean edge when your painting is dried. Go around and do that all the way around. I'm really liking these colours. I think I've done enough of the pinks and apricots. I'm going to go back to my blues and I want to do and a purple actually. I need to do a big pour for my daughter Christy in purples. So I will go back to that and I'll cut down on the silicone. Now I'm just going to see if I can take you in for a close up. And I'll quickly go and turn off that light. Oh no, probably running out of memory. Let's see if I can take this down quickly and show you. Down my little ladder, getting off the table. Whoops, glary lights. Show you the sides as well. Look at that. Sides are pretty. Lovely cells. These ones up here are my favourites, these cells. Look at those. Multicoloured. Back out, I'll show you this side here, pretty sides. These colours here have blended really well. So I've got some lovely background colours. Haven't got too many harsh lines, it's blended nicely. Look at that beautiful blending colours. So pretty. And over here we've got our tiny little Floetrol cells that we get, little tiny white ones. 